The Inupiaq have a word for a person who drifts to sea on ice. They call this person an attic tack. I think about drifting to sea a lot, but there are too many other things to worry about. I've seen toes turn black, crafted machinery fail, and polar bears. There's always a polar bear. If those don't get you, the winds might, so it's tough to believe anything thrives. If it does and when it does, it's my job to find it. Life in the frozen ocean is harsh. Minus 50 temperatures and blanketing snow highlight a landscape seemingly inhabitable. So you core some ice and you watch the horizon for storms that could blow you to sea on a one-way trip into the big white. When you core ice, you're not just making holes. You're creating a portal into a colorful alien world. A world that is inhabited by innumerable tiny glass organisms called diatoms. These diatoms are so small, you need a microscope to see the different shapes and sizes that correspond to over 700 species found in Arctic sea ice. Together, they serve as the plants of the Arctic ice world. Ultimately, they are the foundation of the entire Arctic ecosystem that provide food for zooplankton and seafloor dwelling creatures. In turn, zooplankton are consumed by larger organisms, such as whales and fish. Now, what do you suppose would happen if you removed or even reduced the number of diatoms? Well, the zooplankton would struggle to eat, which doesn't bode well for fish and the organisms that feed on fish. This reduction of diatoms is caused precisely by fungi called chytrids. And these chytrids swim to the diatoms and penetrate their glassy shells with life-sucking probes called rhizoids. When chytrids consume diatoms, zooplankton potentially can't. And these chytrids can parasitize about 5% of all diatoms in a quarter of a single species. This is potentially a 25% reduction of your diet. But what is scary is that the rate of consumption is dependent on the environment, meaning chytrids could reproduce faster and consume far more diatoms, leaving little food for the rest of the ecosystem. The stakes are high and the uncertainty of a melting arctic puts these parasites on the front lines of change. What makes this story even more interesting are these organisms are uncharacterized and completely unknown to arctic science. So we press further into the abstract and travel to the ends of the earth, where north turns south and the present is only a few feet away from tomorrow.